<clears throat> we, we look at the world and we think that there must be somehow a kind of master plan that everybody needs to follow. And there isn't. The world is an emergent phenomenon that arises from the collective activities of different individuals and groups and individual groups which are basically ser serving self-serving needs and are driven by their own particular perspective in how they fit into all this massive puzzle that we call the world. At the same time, collectively, some by design and some maybe not so, some more consciously and some a lot less so, we are all working towards very similar goals. And the reason we work to towards those similar goals is because we all have a feeling of the kind of world we want to inhabit and how we want to feel in that world. And this is beyond any kind of rationalization, any kind of conscious plan. We want, for instance, the world to be safe. We want the world to be a place where we come out in the day without having to watch our back. Uh, because somebody's going to try and kill us and take the shoes off our feet or the clothes off our back, for instance. And for the last 6,000 years, we've actually managed to achieve that. we managed to achieve a world which collectively ensures our physical safety. This is uh, amazing, and it's taken so long because, and it's still an evolving process, because it is so difficult and because no one is in charge of that process. It happens organically and it leads us down a certain path where what we experience is something which we like and becomes a self-reinforcing principle. While the world protects us physically, we have uh, codified many laws and uh, legislation to actually make sure this happens. While the world protects us physically, it is a lot less protective of our mental and psychological health. These are the unseen parts of us. And it is only in the last perhaps 50 years that we've begun to externalize the trauma we feel from the world that injures us. And it still does that. You know, we go out in the world and, you know, chances are you're going to come up against a boss who doesn't understand you. And you're going to come up against somebody in power who's going to abuse that power. You're going to come up against some kind of situation where you're going to feel helpless and powerless and you will have to submit to it and you're going to survive it, but in surviving it, you're going to be traumatized. And this is a trauma which you're going to take with you. And there are many levels of manifestation of the trauma. Sometimes it's in our behavior because psychologically we've been damaged. Uh, sometimes it's in our relationships because emotionally we've been damaged. And sometimes if the trauma is deep enough and we haven't managed to get past it, it will manifest itself physically. And this is unacceptable, really. But we haven't yet started to think about it collectively. But the thing is, we have started to think about it. Already this externalization of our internal world, the ability we have to share the trauma, to share our psycholog psychological experiences, and say that, hey, I'm feeling this, and it's okay, is leading us to a kind of acceptance of the reality of the internal world. And the next phase, the next step of that acceptance, is the admission that damaging somebody psychologically, damaging somebody emotionally, is not okay. And right now, it's left to the goodwill of individuals, pretty much like a physical safety. In the past, at some point, it was left to the goodwill of individuals. But at some point in the future, we're going to start legislating for it, so they're going to be rules and laws and regulations but more importantly there's also going to be a clearer understanding which will apply unseen but all-powerful societal acceptance pressures which will ensure that we no longer harm somebody physically or psychologically or mentally sorry somebody, somebody mentally or psychologically just like now we can't harm them physically and that i think is going to be an amazing world to live in